welcome to X-Ray Review. This video is about lumbosacral transitional segments and specifically the Castelvi classification. So a lumbosacral transitional segment is a congenital anomaly and it's where the most distal lumbar segment and the sacrum can have an altered morphology where the transverse processes of L5 can become hypertrophied and either articulate or fuse to the sacrum and this segment can be either functionally lumbar or functionally sacral and there's many different types and variations of these. Castelvi classifies different lumbosacral transitional segments into four different types as well as two subtypes. A for a unilateral presentation and B for a bilateral presentation. And before we go any further, we have to stop and remember the importance of counting the lumbar segments. There could be four, five, or six of them. However many there are, you have to be consistent in your reporting. And if you mess this up and don't realize it till you're halfway through the report, like I've done many times, you have to start completely over. So pause and count the segments until you feel comfortable. It can be challenging, especially if you don't have a thoracic view and you can't count or quantify all the segments. So be consistent in your reporting. So to make sure I'm clear, when I'm writing a report, I find the most distal lumbar segment, I give it a number, and then I'm consistent throughout my report. And I'll say, for the purposes of this report, the most distal lumbar segment will be referred to as and in this case, that would be L5. So here we have a totally normal lumbar spine on the left and then a animation on the right showing the lumbosacral junction. If we look at this X-ray, there's five lumbar segments. This is the most distal and then here's the sacrum. The transverse processes of L5 are totally normal in size and shape and the sacrum is as well. So there's normal morphology of both the lumbar uh, distal segment and sacrum. So there's no lumbosacral transitional segment here. Totally normal lumbar spine. So here we have a type 1A lumbosacral transitional segment. And this is where one of the transverse processes is enlarged, hypertrophied, or dysplastic, usually by approximately 19 millimeters. And really all this is, is an enlarged transverse process. A type 1B is a bilateral enlargement of the transverse processes. And similar to a type 1, this really is not clinically important. It's just enlargement of the transverse processes. A type 2 lumbosacral transitional segment is very common. And this is where we'll see a pseudo articulation of the transverse process with the sacrum. A type 2B is bilateral enlargement of the transverse processes which form pseudo articulations with the sacrum. These are common and they have a higher statistical probability of disc herniations at the level above. So that's something to take clinical note of. Please try to excuse the multiple benign uterine fibroids or lyomyomas in the pelvic basin. But a type 3A lumbosacral transitional segment is going to have unilateral fusion, hypertrophy of one transverse process, which is then fused to the sacrum. And then the contralateral side is normal. And this will be functionally sacral as that segment is again fused to the sacrum. A type 3B is where you have bilateral enlargement of the transverse processes, which are fused to the sacrum. And then typically on the lateral view, you'll see a hypoplastic or remnant disc in that region of the L5 or S1 disc. The last is type four, which is a type 2A on one side and a type three on the other. So essentially this is a functionally sacral segment as it, the distal segment is fused to the sacrum. So let's try a couple. If we zoom in on this case, looking at the lumbosacral junction, we can see a hypertrophy transverse process which forms a pseudo articulation. So this would be a type 
a lumbosacral transitional segment. On this example, if we zoom in, we can see bilateral hypertrophy of the transverse processes which form pseudoarticulations with the sacrum. So this would be a type 2B. Which best describes the visualized lumbosacral transitional segment? And here we have a normal transverse process and then another that's enlarged, hypertrophied, and articulates with the sacrum. So this would be a Castelvi type 2A. Which best describes the visualized lumbosacral transitional segment? Looks like we have enlargement and fusion on one side and a normal transverse process obscured by some bowel gas on the other. That would make this a type 3A. Which best describes the visualized lumbosacral transitional segment? And in this case, there is not one. This is a normal lumbar spine. Which best describes a type 3B lumbosacral transitional segment? And a type 3B is going to be a bilateral fusion. So that would be B. There are a couple other terms you should know that I didn't really mention in this video just because they're not my personal preference, but lumbarization of S1 is a similization of S1 to the lumbar spine. This is would be functionally lumbar, and it's not that common. There's also a sacralization of L5, which is a similization of L5 to the sacrum, and this is functionally sacral and more common. But again, I prefer the Castelvi classification system, so I stay away from these terms, but lumbarization and sacralization do refer to lumbosacral transitional segments. All right, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned a few things about the Castelvi classification system. Um, and if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Thanks.